In November 2019, the people of Bougainville, currently a part of Papua New Guinea, will hold a referendum on independence. Depending on the result, this could mean the world gets a brand new sovereign country. But there's much more to this story, so stick around to find out. Before we dive into the referendum, let's orient ourselves with the region. This is the island of New Guinea. It's a bit of a crossover point between Asia and Oceania. This is the country of Papua New Guinea, which is mostly on the island of New Guinea, but also includes lots of smaller islands. These are the Solomon Islands, and this is the country of the Solomon Islands, which doesn't include all of the Solomon Islands. With me so far? This is Bougainville Island, which along with some smaller islands makes up the autonomous region of Bougainville, which is an autonomous region currently part of the country of Papua New Guinea, but situated in the Solomon Island archipelago. Later this year, Bougainville will hold a referendum on independence from the rest of Papua New Guinea. Bougainville is more geographically and culturally similar to the rest of the Solomon Islands, so how did it end up as part of Papua New Guinea in the first place? During European colonisation and decolonisation in the last century, existing cultural borders were largely ignored by the colonising countries. This was reinforced when Papua New Guinea, inclusive of Bougainville, gained independence as one sovereign country from Australia in 1975. This has been one of the driving factors for the Bougainvillean secession movement and subsequent conflicts. And like many other conflicts around the world, the hunt for resources also features heavily in this one. Bougainville is rich in copper, and in the 1960s, the largest open-cut mine on Earth was located on Bougainville Island. Open-cut mining can have devastating impacts on the natural environment and on local people, which led to protests and was a catalyst for armed conflict. Over the next decades, the conflict had become not just about the mine itself, but also about profits leaving the island and about Bougainville's attempted secession from Papua New Guinea. This was a particularly complex conflict, as Bougainville, along with the rest of Papua New Guinea, is made up of many different people groups, which creates lots of different lines along which political views can fracture. Violence continued until the late 90s and included a blockade of Bougainville put in place by the PNG government with support of the Australian government. A formal peace agreement was arranged in 2001. The peace agreement included a provision for a referendum on independence, which is currently scheduled for November 2019, two months after the release of this video. So what would Bougainville look like if it were to become a new country? Recent estimates put the population at about 300,000 people. This would make it a comparable size to other Oceanian states, such as Vanuatu, and more populous than another group of Oceanian islands with possible independence in its future, New Caledonia. Bougainville has a tropical climate and lots of lush rainforests. The current capital is Buka on Buka Island, although Arawa on Bougainville Island was the previous capital before being heavily damaged in the conflict of recent decades. So what does the future look like for Bougainville? Well, the referendum on independence is non-binding, which means that even if independence is the most popular outcome, it still has to be agreed to by the Papua New Guinean national government. I won't try to preempt the results of the referendum or the PNG government's subsequent actions, but it is easy to imagine a situation in which a disconnect between what people vote for and how governments respond causes further tensions to escalate. From a more positive point of view, it is also conceivable that if independence is voted for, the PNG government may agree to it without any further escalation intentions. Although given the recent history we've just touched on, and PNG likely not wanting to encourage other provinces to secede, it remains to be seen how likely this is. This was a quick overview of a complex political situation that has unfolded over decades and involves the real lives of hundreds of thousands of people. However interesting it is to me to discuss the geopolitics and geography of a region and get excited by the prospect of a new country on the world map, it is important to remember that the local people are the ones predominantly affected by conflicts, peace agreements, referenda, and possible new sovereign states. The rest of the world will just have to wait and see which direction the people of Bougainville decide for their islands. As always, thanks for watching and double thanks if you're a subscriber. See you in the next video.